Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Noha El Mekawi. <laughs> I work for UNDP Regional Bureau for the Arab States region. I would like to share with you today, uh, in a very short presentation, some key features of this event as it has unfolded yesterday. There are some things that happened that you are probably not aware of that I would like to share with you. Um, and this has to do with the extent of coverage that has uh, been increasing attention towards the issues of this event through various means of media uh, and social media in particular communication. It's important for me to say that because yesterday's event honored us with the presence of a, an incredible number of distinguished thinkers and policy makers who've made very difficult decisions in their lives and the lives of the people they led. And their insights were very important for us here in the room, but their insights reached thousands of people more outside this room, and this is what I would like you to know about. What we heard yesterday in very few bullet points tells us that transitions are good ground for learning. And I have to say, speakers have repeatedly insisted on telling us that they are not here to teach us anything, that they cannot give us lessons, but they can share their experience. It's up to us to draw the lessons. But they also told us that transitions come in different forms and shapes. Transitions have different durations and lengths. And some are actually ongoing. Some of our Latin American friends insisted their transitions are still ongoing after many, many years. Because the democratic project is an ongoing project. Our distinguished speakers yesterday have also highlighted to us that there are some major challenges that we need to grapple with because they had to grapple with as well. And I'll summarize those challenges very briefly. One challenge is the challenge of expectations. People's expectations are high. And it's everybody's job including the leadership of the transition to manage those expectations. They also told us that some level of get together in coalition building is important. Others might call it national dialogues, others might call it national unity, but some level of get together and not splintering is important. They also told us that transitions grapple with issues of justice, tolerance, and accommodation. And these are issues of moral authority, political tactic, as well as leadership, as already mentioned. And finally, we heard from distinguished guests yesterday that we would be making a mistake if we think of transitions as only political tactic without linking that to social and economic justice. And somehow this is a challenge that they shared experiences on and challenge that we have to grapple with. It seems that all these messages and big points we got yesterday attracted the attention of an incredible amount of people outside of this room, 
yesterday. Uh, we were live on Al Jazeera and Egypt television yesterday. Al Jazeera broadcasted live for five hours. We were connected to three universities in Egypt via live streaming. These are the University of Cairo, Alexandria, and Asyut in southern Egypt. University of Asyut was the most active and most engaged in our discussions. And many of the questions, actually, that the moderators raised here were coming from those university students live streamed to us. In total, there were 450 followers of our discussions yesterday from these university connections. And within the 450 followers, were, there are groups of followers. So the 450 number hides behind it, groups sitting together in rooms connected to the computer. We were also linked up by live stream to Jordan, and the UNDP Jordan office facilitated that to happen. <coughs> Over and above, we used social media quite heavily yesterday. And I'm only giving you the statistics from the last 24 hours. We had our own internal UNDP uh, Teamworks network, and that covered 30,000 colleagues from within UNDP to, uh, uh, connected to us via our internal uh, Teamworks. We also were connected by Facebook and Twitter, and alone the group of his Excellency President Habibi's uh, connection to us managed to link us up to at least 15,000 who were tweeting with us yesterday. Over and above that, we had, in the last 24 hours only, a reach of 2.5 million worldwide uh, those are people who received comments, and the countries that were included in that reception ranged from France to Egypt, Argentina, Canada, Indonesia, the USA, South Africa, Tunisia, Jordan, El Salvador, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Chile, Brazil, Venezuela, Kenya, Cyprus, Germany, Malaysia, and Trinidad. Some of the comments we got on tweet, I will be reading to you later, just a few. We had on the UNDP Egypt Facebook page 12,800 views, 430 thereof were active and bringing in comments from various countries around the world and in the Arab region. In the Arab region, there were 11,000 tweets yesterday, within 24 hours, and some of the comments that we got were the following. This is an excellent coverage, I must say. I feel like I'm with you in the room. Another comment. I'm afraid that if Egypt does not move forward, ending sectarian strife and discouraging religious intolerance, it will not move forward. A third comment was from the United States, and not an Arab living there, from an American, from the name, I suppose. We should take advice from this event a national reflection, reflection on our own constitution is due. A fourth comment said, pluralism is not impossible. 
if you choose to adopt the concept of tolerance. And another comment, final one, said, combating extremism starts with education and tackling unemployment. These are key issues for a successful transition to democracy. And in fact, this is precisely where we will be moving today in our uh, second and last day of this event. I will give you just a very quick overview of how today will, uh, will unfold. And it is an important day, as much as we uh, feel yesterday was not only important, but quite insightful. Today is a day for all of you around this room to engage truly in discussions. We will start after we take a short break here in order to split this room into two. We will go into two parallel sessions like yesterday. These two parallel sessions will pick up on two issues that were raised yesterday by our distinguished guests. One issue is that of justice and human rights. How do we ensure, through listening to their experience, how do we ensure that a transitional process safeguards principles of human rights, respects them and protects them, as well as ensures a tact, an intact, independent justice system that protects and respects and enforces those human rights. A very important issue that has provoked all these young and old people in the Arab world to ask for change. The second parallel session will handle the issue that we heard yesterday from President Bachelet and President Habibi and others we should not forget, namely the economic justice. How can we ensure that transitional processes start, put us on the right track towards economic justice with macroeconomic policies and local level policies that overcome disparities. Let's not forget Tunisians went out sparked by uprisings in regions that were underdeveloped in a country that was a good performer in the Arab world economically. That underlined the issue of economic disparities between the regions so much that we cannot forget this lesson ever again. This will be the session, the session on macroeconomics and overcoming socioeconomic disparities in the regions. In both of those sessions, we have distinguished guests from uh, invited countries, as well as our distinguished guests from the delegations Tunisia, Morocco, and Jordan. Everything is in the agenda. I will not repeat it. After lunch, we go into an in-depth discussion in five roundtables we call South-South Roundtables, where all our distinguished guests hopefully will be with us to lead discussions in much smaller roundtables for you to ask in-depth questions on the five topics that you have in the agenda. Two of those sessions will be live streamed in the same way that I described for yesterday, reaching out hopefully to as many thousands of people as we did yesterday. Some of you might have gone home, hopefully telling people how good yesterday was. And some of your children, husbands, spouses might have said, why didn't you take me with you? And you might have said, I heard you can catch up on this event somehow. I would like to tell you that, yes, we are making this event live by having it captured in material that goes on YouTube, and it will be later on available for others to follow minute by minute. In the course of the day, the tables will have a sticker, many copies of stickers that tell you how do you link up to this web page uh, that will make this event a live 
Lee event for many, many weeks and months to come. And it, the title is, the, the hyperlink right now is www.cairotransitionsforum.info. But again, this will be available on your tables. You don't have to write it down right now. I cannot thank you enough for being so insightful yesterday and again today. There is a huge team in your NDP that has worked very hard to receive you here. We are all extremely thankful and grateful for you being here and for giving us all of your insights in such a wonderfully intact and concrete manner. Let's hope this continues throughout the day in the two parallel sessions as well as in the five South-South roundtables. Much appreciate you being with us. Wish you a very good day today. We'll break just to be able to split the room and then come back in either economic session on economic justice or the human rights and justice session. Thank you very much.